Well, hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 2021. It has arrived. We made it. Yes. It's here. Well, first of all, happy holidays to everybody out there. We hope that you are all happy and healthy and ready to embark on this new year together. Hope you're excited for more board games. Yes. Because there's... More 2020 upcoming. was quite the year mm -hmm. uh, in terms of board games. That, that was a really good release year. And we haven't even played all of the ones that came out in yeah. the last year. I was pretty surprised uh, that so many good games did come out. Mm -hmm. You know, in a year of COVID where, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, the company still released them and, and we were pretty pleasantly surprised with a lot of them. And this year is looking like a, a good year as well. Yeah. So we're excited about that. So yesterday we put out our Q&A where we basically fielded questions from the audience and also from different social media platforms and try to answer as much of them as we could. Sorry if it went a little bit long, but we hope uh, that you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> and if you have no idea what we're talking about, we will include a link up there. We do have a few things to talk about in this month's vlog, seeing as it is the first one for the year. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be talking about our Patreon updates, our um, New Year's resolutions, as well as a few other things that we usually talk about. Mm -hmm. So first things first, we finally updated our shelf Yes. on BGG. Yes. So if you look up Before You Play as a user on BGG. We'll put a link in the description below. We'll put below. it there. But our shelf, our collection, uh, if you go into that tab, it's all there. So all the games that we have and own, and then all the games that we have not played yet yes. are also on there. So you will notice that some of the entries have uh, like five asterisks in mm -hmm. a little line in the comments section. Those are all of the games that are on our shelf that are unplayed. Yes. And so for anybody who is interested in finding out what is on our shelf of shame or shelf of opportunity and maybe making recommendations, those are the games. There's mm -hmm. quite a lot of them. We understand that there's a lot of them. Um, yes, we may have uh, acquired faster than we could play mm -hmm. in the past, and yep. now it's obviously even more difficult because we are in the content creation space. Exactly. But enjoy! Yes, um, and you might be pleasantly surprised or shocked at some of the games that we own that are on the shelf of shame. <laughs> You'd be like, they have that game and they have not played it? Yeah, wow. I know, it's yeah. not good. Which brings us to our next point, which is our Patreon. So last month we did a soft launch of our Patreon and that what that meant was that we launched the Patreon but mm -hmm. we didn't include necessarily um, any specific levels or rewards. We're not going to talk about every single detail. If you're interested in looking at all the different levels that we've created, feel free to head over there and take a look. But of course, no pressure. Yep. This is just for anybody who's interested in extra content. Mm -hmm. We are going to be including first impression vlogs as a reward. And so this is something that, that had been brought up in the past because we don't feature first impression vlogs on our channel, right. um, mainly because we, we feature a lot of just other types of content. Sometimes our impressions do change yep. after the first, the first time we play it. These vlogs are going to be very informal videos. Sometimes they might be in our PJs because yep. that is <laughs> how we play games usually when yep. we're at home. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be literally, we just finished the, the playing the game for the very first time. We're going to pop up on our phones yep. and things will be crooked. Yeah, we're gonna Sorry. film our thoughts and, and kind of do a compilation video uh, for the Patreon. Every now and then we may feature uh, a few of those videos on our channel, uh, especially if it's for a very popular release, mm -hmm. but that that's gonna be dependent on <laughs> yeah. the status of what we look like in the video. <laughs> yeah, that's right, hair emoji like that. <laughs> just to let you guys know, the Patreon, the, the primary purpose of it is just to constantly upgrade our equipment mm -hmm. so that we have better, better quality. So. Um, Last month, we, uh, like Monique said, soft launched, and this month we just bought a new uh, overhead rig stand with a new ball head mount, so it's going to make our setup here. It's, it's stuff that you can't really see from the camera angle uh, that we show you guys, but it's going to help us out with production. Yes, yeah. that is the primary goal of the Patreon, so mm -hmm. that it can give us assistance in upgrading equipment as well as just other things for the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, once we're fully upgraded, we, we might still continue it if people are really enjoying it, but that is our primary concern with it. Yep. So anytime we, we need to make a decision on which game to prioritize, we're gonna put it up as a poll on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. And of course, voting rights, as well as uh, nominations. So nominating a Shelf of Shame games for us to play, yep. that's all included in the Patreon. So if, this, if any of this sounds interesting to you, please go ahead and head over there and uh, check it out. Okay, now moving on to our plans for the channel for 2021, uh, we want to do a couple more top tens. We really enjoy doing those. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also want to focus a little bit more on some expansions to games. Yes, yeah. we haven't really been featuring expansions Not much, too much yeah. on our channel. And so we're, we figured this is a year. This is a year to do maybe short form reviews mm -hmm. uh, because we really like expansions actually. We do. Yeah, we do. I used to be like a, an expansion addict. Like anytime an expansion to a new game would come out, I would pre-order it. Yeah, even if sight unseen, was, just like, oh, yeah. I like the base game. Okay, I'm just going for the expansion. So. Yeah. 
So we'll probably end up featuring some of those on our channel. Yep. This year, we also plan on featuring a few more Kickstarters than we did last year. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted to say a little bit about how we approach Kickstarters mm -hmm. for our channel. Kickstarters are kind of an interesting topic because I feel like every channel kind of approaches them differently. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to let you know that we do not accept every single Kickstarter that shows up in our inbox. No. Uh, we highly filter them. Mm -hmm. So we try to make it so that the type of game that we accept is a game that makes sense for our channel and that maybe you all would enjoy kind of checking out. Yep. Our Kickstarter services come in the form of Kickstarter previews and mm -hmm. sponsored playthroughs, which yep. you've already seen. They are paid and because of that, we do not give an opinion or a review. Right. That is where we stand. If ever we are going to give a review on a game, then it's not going to be paid. Never. No. Yeah. So something like Darwin's Journey, which is a Kickstarter project technically that we did a review for that was not a sponsored uh, project. Right. And so that is just something that we felt like we wanted to start the year off by explaining. It was a game that interested us. It's, it was by designers that we uh, are very familiar with. Mm -hmm. So it enticed us and we said, okay, we want to look more into this. Mm -hmm. uh, our filtration process is basically we got to see that rule book. If, if we're happy with the rule book, the, only then will we proceed with the Kickstarter game. Right. So with that being said, that doesn't mean we're going to become a Kickstarter based, based channel, yeah. uh, but mm -hmm. we will sprinkle them in every so often. And so coming up this month on our channel, uh, we did get a notification that we think it's Cloud Age yes. is on its way. And so um, we don't know for sure, but we're assuming this tracking is Cloud Age. <laughs> And so with that knowledge, we are going to finally release hold of our video for Maracaibo yes. this week. We've been trying to hold back on it just to kind of get it a little bit closer to when we can do Cloud Age so mm -hmm. we can kind of finish the series in one big swoop. Exactly. But uh, it's been <laughs> tough trying to manage our time that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to release uh, Maracaibo this week. We definitely want to do another top 10 this month, potentially for our most anticipated games of 2021. Mm -hmm. Now that we know how to look that up, by the way, yes. on BGG. I didn't know until like... Two months ago that yeah. you can look up like by year so uh, you can search in the advanced search on bgg and you can type in the date range that you want to look up so you can look up what's coming out potentially in 2021 yeah we're not as technologically savvy yes. on bgg for some that. reason yeah. so seeing as we are going to be wrapping up this designer series the alexander fister series uh we are thinking about what our next series is going to be um I don't know if we're going to do a specific designer. We might do a trilogy series, uh, but we don't want to say exactly yet. I think it's still by a specific designer. <laughs> well, technically, yes. But we, we are weighing a couple options for trilogy games yes. uh, that we can be So doing. because the Fister series was so incredibly long, and so was the Vitella series, to tell yeah. you the truth, we kind of want to do uh, a couple shorter ones, maybe stuff that lasts just a month. And what we're referring to is a particular Shem designer who has a trilogy uh -huh. out there. About kingdoms. About kingdoms. That is one okay. that we are potentially considering. We're thinking about it, yeah. Uh, the other alternative is playing a game like Spirit Island or like, say, mm, for example, maybe Root. Okay. And just playing it several times with different configurations, different mm. factions. I know Root has a couple of expansions that allow you to play two player with like an AI mm -hmm. or with uh, a bot. I think that's what it is. And so that's that's something that we're also considering. So when we do eventually make that decision, we'll probably put a poll up on Patreon and let you guys vote for it. Mm -hmm. But we would love to hear your thoughts regardless. Uh, would you be interested in seeing one game sit played three times or so with different mm -hmm. configurations? We know that there is a large Root following out there and we haven't featured that game on our channel at all yet. And now, before we get into our game of the month, which is what we always like to end these vlogs with, we do want to discuss some New Year's resolutions. So we each have our own you know, personal resolutions that we like to do just for uh, personal growth, but we want to talk specifically about board gaming New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. And we would love to hear what yours are, because we know there are, that there are a lot of people out there who like to do like the 10 by 10. And if you're not familiar with what I'm referring to, um, there is this app, I believe it's called BG Stats. BG Stats, yes. I used to use it a lot when I first started getting into gaming yeah. and um, I used to try to log all of my plays of every game that I played until it got a little bit too much to keep track of. Mm -hmm. But on that app, you can do a challenge. Uh, some people do like a 10 by 10 or I think you could even do it even less, like a yep. 5 by 5. Uh -huh. And what those challenges are is basically, if I do a 10 by 10, I am vowing to play these 10 games, which you have to identify in advance, mm -hmm. the, the exact 10 that you're going to be playing, 10 times, 10 times each. each yeah. So that's a hundred plays total of these 
10 games, essentially. It's quite a bit, yeah. Over it's, the course it's a of a year. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. It is, it is quite the challenge, especially if you are, you know, a, the type of gamer who likes to play, you know, the new games mm -hmm. constantly. It's a tough one to do, but it does get you to play those unplayed games several times over the course of a year. Now, you're not, you're not saying this is your resolution to do a 10 We're by 10. We're not doing oh, okay. that. Okay. Okay. You're just explaining that you can do a 10 by 10. Yes. Okay. And so if anybody out there is going to be doing a challenge like this, we would love to hear about it down below. Please mm -hmm. let us know. And if you're not, please let us know if you're doing any other New Year's resolutions. But I know for us, we are going to try our best to play all of our campaign games. Yes. Campaign slash legacy style games mm -hmm. this year. Yes. Because be nice. we have too many of them we that do, are not yeah. finished. And like something like Pandemic Legacy, we've been stuck in July of season two. Yeah, I think we're like July or August of season two. Still haven't played. I know we talked about it a couple of months ago. Still didn't play it. It needs to happen. Yeah. This is the year that we are going to finish Pandemic Legacy season two, as well as season zero, which is sitting right over there, right there. Yep. <laughs> um, as well as the other campaign style games that we have. Maracaibo is one that we wanted to explore. We want to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Codenames Duet has a <laughs> campaign that we're thinking about doing. Naveen loves Codenames I Duet. I love Codenames Duet. We also have expansions as time stories that we haven't played. So anyway, we're yep. going to be working on that this entire year. And hopefully with each vlog, each month that we do these vlogs, we're going to give you an update. <laughs> yes. So you can like, keep we're us... we're on August now. Yeah. yeah. So you can kind of keep us... Uh, in check there. Mm -hmm. That is us. Uh, again, we would love to hear what your resolutions are, even if they're not board gaming related. Just let us know. Yep. We love hearing about it. And last but not least, like we always do, we are going to talk about our favorite gaming experience of the month. So we spoke about these ahead of time. So we have the exact same favorite gaming experience. So yeah. we'll talk with uh, our runner-ups. Yes. Okay. What's your runner-up? <laughs> you. <laughs> My runner-up for the game of the month is a it's actually like a party game but you can still play it over zoom or facetime which mm -hmm. is what we did and it is called monstrosity mm. and i actually have it with me this time instead of like a little picture to show <laughs> you the game this is monstrosity it is a game designed by um, eric slosson and published by Deepwater games and this is technically a party style game where you're going to be drawing mm -hmm. so <laughs> the premise is that there is a monster who I, I they probably committed some crime. Wreaking havoc. Yeah, and uh -huh. so we are all eyewitnesses sitting around the table. We are also sketch artists <laughs> who have to draw out what the what the visual profile of this monster looks like. Right. And so the monsters are all very silly looking, as you can see from the box art. I'm very tempted to pull out some cards and show you, but I, I also just don't want to show any spoilers just in case it makes an impact on your game. Sure, sure. Uh, and so what happens is one person is the the key witness or so, and they look at the they get to look at the monster card. They have 20 seconds yes. to analyze this card as much as they can, uh, taking into account you know, the, all the details of the face, the, the body, everything, like that, yeah. except for color. And then once the 20 seconds is done, they don't get to look at the card anymore, and they must now spend the next two minutes describing to everybody else around the table what this monster looks like. <laughs> and so everybody around the table is allowed to ask questions like, okay, how many eyes does this monster have? Yeah. How many legs? Um, how long is its trunk or yeah. how many talons or whatever it is yeah and everybody's drawing on their, their dry erase board and it's it's really hilarious the route after the two minutes is up then you're gonna have a little bit of, of scoring it's really fun yeah it's it's silly I, i'm i'm terrible at it i felt like i was pretty decent at describing but when it comes down to me interpreting other people's uh descriptions that was that stuff it's hilarious yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm a terrible drawer awful yeah yeah <laughs> Sorry, I agree. Horrible. I'm actually not good either. We played with the sisters who don't play games with us that often, and everybody had a really good time. Yep. So that is Monstrosity, Monstrosity. by Eric Slauson, published by Deepwater Games. And you, what was your runner-up? Uh, my runner-up is a video we released recently. It is a Kickstarter game. It is Darwin's Journey. This one is from Thundergriff Games, and it's designed by two different designers, Simone Luciani and Nestor Mangone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a dry euro. It is a pure <laughs> dry euro. I, I won't uh, spend too much time talking about it, but you're you're basically chronicling uh, Darwin's journeys throughout the Galapagos Islands, trying to get sample sp uh, species and deliver them to the museum and try to score points in a bunch of different ways. Uh, it's a big combo tastic game. Uh, we did a playthrough of it, so we'll leave a link over here. Uh, but that is my runner-up, Darwin's Journey. Yeah, I highly consider that as my runner-up as well because we both had a really good time with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe they're still on Kickstarter. Oh yeah, yeah, so. it's doing very well on Kickstarter. Um, and I think it'll be going for a couple weeks. Okay, and moving on to our most favorite game of the month, 
of December 2020, dun, 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 dun. it is Spirit Island. Yeah, it was so fun. <laughs> yeah, so this one uh, was on our shelf of shame. This was voted on by our Patreon supporters to play it off the shelf. We got the nudge to play it, and mm -hmm. I'm so glad we did. Yes. Really fun. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's a very difficult game. Yes. It's a very, it's a fully cooperative game where you are trying to protect this island from invaders, essentially. Yep. Each player plays as a different spirit who is protecting the island, and each spirit has their own uh, thematic, asymmetric card. Yeah, the way deck. they they play and the mm -hmm. way they affect uh, the the invaders. Yes. Yep. So this is a very difficult game, but a very very fun one. Yes. We really really enjoyed it, and it is one that we vow to do more playthroughs of mm -hmm. because we, uh, if you caught the video that we put on our channel, we did kind of like a beginner setup because yes. that was all that we were able to strategically handle at the time. <laughs> yes. So now, you know, maybe this is another New Year's resolution to play Spirit Island a ton. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Spirit Island, yep. Great game. So those were our favorite gaming experiences of the month. Uh, what were yours? We would love to hear about it. How did you end 2020? Did you have nice, fun gaming sessions at home? And have you played games since the new year started? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing what this year has to offer for, our, for all of us, yeah, right? for all of us, yeah. So anyway, happy holidays and uh, thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.